Okay, everybody, before we get into this tutorial, something super exciting to tell you. We have a brand new game out called Rumble Runner. You're going to love it. It's got some really cool mechanics, great gameplay, very fast paced, lots of good fun to be had here. Check it out in the map code on the screen and down below. And let's get into this tutorial that you guys have all come here to learn. All right, everybody, we're going to do something kind of interesting today. I've seen this request come out quite a bit. And it is the idea that you can have your own currency or your own thing to spend to buy things or do whatever. So in this throw, we've got super bucks and super bucks go up every 10 seconds. So let's grab a coin. They go up 50. If you get one of the coins, go grab one of these coins and you'll see our super bucks goes up to 110. Then, of course, we do want to spend them. So we're going to come over here to the gunsmith where all the weapons are. And there's a lovely lady in here where we can buy a gun. Bam! We now have a gun. And we can't shoot the character, but there you go. So we're going to get super bucks and we're going to spend super bucks. And this is a custom sort of currency that you can use in your game. So let's figure out how to do that. OK, this is a little bit to go over, but I've tried to make it as absolutely as simple as possible to understand the start of how to make this happen. So the first thing that we're going to go over is everything inside of UEFN. So I've got a basic cabin here. I put a fire because I think it looks good. And then I put a little character in here that's animated. And on top of her is a button. So this button is what's going to activate the weapon grantor. So the only changes that I've made in here is to have the interaction radius a little bit bigger. So if you make the interaction radius smaller or bigger, you got to be closer to it or farther away from it to make it happen. So I just put it at one because it pretty much encompasses the character that's in this game. And the other thing that I did was set the interact time to one so that it looks like you're kind of I'd like to buy a gun. Thanks. <laughs> sort of idea. Uh, otherwise, it just happens so fast. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. The other things that we have in here are collectibles. And this is just a simple item that I'm using to trigger an event. So I've got one up here in the sand, one there, and one there. And then we have here our item grantor. Item granters are very simple. And if this is new to you at all, there is a tutorial linked below that will get you started. A little bit better. I think I'll do a beginner series. We'll see. Anyway, so this is an item grantor device, and this is going to grant Relics MK Alpha Assault Rifle, which is a powerful rifle. So you're going to want that. And then over here, we have a HUD device, and this is going to let us know if we don't have enough super bucks. This is our game manager, which is a verse device. If you don't know anything about verse, again, tutorials linked below. It'll get you all going with it. So and this is a timer. This is our 10 second timer that's going to run Every 10 seconds, it's going to do something. It's going to give us uh, super bucks. And then, of course, we have our spawner, which is going to allow us to be on this amazing island. This is what the island looks like. If you're wondering how to go making stuff like this, I didn't make this. This is just the default uh, volcano island that's in UAFN when you start it up. So I like to use these because it looks a little bit better than just having a, a normal. Anyways, let's just get into the verse. Let's talk about how this ver how this all comes together, because we're tying all this together with verse. We are not using bindings inside of the details panel. I think that's incredibly inefficient and nobody should ever use it ever, ever, ever. You should just use verse. So let's do some verse. OK, so here's one of our verse files. There's two verse files in this game. There's the game manager, which you can see on the stage as this computer looking device. We drag that onto the stage so that it can interact with everything that's on the stage. So that's the game manager. The game manager is our game managing file. And you can put a lot of stuff in here. You don't want to put everything in here, but you can put a lot of stuff in here. And it does all of the responding to the pickups, to the button, things like that. And then we have a custom player because this is a multiplayer game. So what we want to do is we want to remember that each player has their own things to it. So we make a class in this case called custom player. And this is all explained on Epic's website. They do tutorials about it. You can make a player's map and stuff like that. So this isn't new, but I'm hoping maybe I'll make it more understandable for everybody that you'll understand. So let's discuss everything that's that we've got here that we can do in the game manager. So at the very beginning, we're going to make a player's map. A player's map is just a way to take the player and stick them in a box. And then that box goes in a room. And then you have a way to get to that box really easy. Does that make sense? It's a map. So it's a holder of information that is indexed. Do you have a, a unique index? To find it. So if you were to imagine something simple like a storage facility and everybody's got a storage locker and you say, OK, I want to find locker 5B 
And then you go look for where that is, and then inside there is your stuff. So this is what it is, it's a map. So we're gonna put all the players in a map. And then we have our button device, and that is our weapons button, which is sitting on the girl. The message device, which is a HUD message device, lets us know that we don't have enough super bucks to buy the gun if we don't have enough super bucks. And then we have a weapon grantor, which as I said, grants the rifle. And then we have our timer, which as I said, goes off every 10 seconds. We'll take a look at that. We have our three collectible items, those golden coins. We have our player spawner device. And then we have a few constants in here. And one of them is collectible value. And that's going to be set to 50. It's an integer. They're all integers. The timer value is five and the weapon costs 100. So these are sort of the costs. We'll put a comment here. Costs of costs and value of items in the game. I suggest doing this, like don't put all of your values for the things that you want to have in the game. When you collect an item, you wanna put them in a central location. So if, a, if somebody gets a collectible coin, they, in this case, they get 50 super bucks. The timer, as it's going every 10 seconds, they get five super bucks. And then the cost of this particular weapon that we have in the game is a hundred. So on begin runs when the game starts, we wanna put all of our event subscriber methods in here. So we have our P1 spawner, which is our player spawner, our three collectibles, our weapon button, and our timer. All of these have an event that happens on them. The spawner has a spawn event, the collectible has a collected event, the weapon button has an interacted with event for a button, and the super bucks timer has a success event. So when the timer finishes, it calls success. I've successfully finished my time. And it's going to just repeat over and over. On these, we call subscribe, and then we tell it the method that we want to call. And this one is on player added, on collect, because the collectibles are all the same, so they just call the same function. And then get weapon button is going to call on weapon button. Super bucks timer is going to call on super bucks timer. Now these are very understandable functions that you can find at the really quickly. So let's go take a look in here. On player added gets the agent object, and we're going to see if we can get the player object from the agent. This might be kind of confusing. Again, check the tutorial as linked. There's lots more in there. Now we want to check inside of the player's map because the player's map uses the player object as its index. And then we see if it's in there. If it's in there, don't do anything because we already have a player in there. They probably got eliminated and they're respawning. So we don't want to reinitiate a spawned character. They already have all their stuff. If not, then grab the fort character because we might want to do something on the fort character. Like if they're eliminated or if they get damaged or something like that, those events sit on the fort character. I'm not doing anything in this case, but you could. And then we want to make a custom player class. And this is going to hold our player in it and give it extra abilities like how many super bucks do you have? So we do that by calling it something custom player. And then we define its object type, which is custom player, which is this file here, this class here. Look at this in a second. And uh, we instantiate it with custom player, passing in the player parameter as the agent. So we're passing in the whole player object, which is the agent, essentially. It's a little bit confusing, but over time you just get used to it. And then we're gonna use option because we want to uh, make something happen, but it can fail. So we're just gonna use option here, set, the player's map player object. So the player's map, which is our map, which is our big room with uh, all of our little rooms in it. And then we're going to say player object, which is our index. Like I said, the room is 5B. Well, player object is the index in the player's map. And it's going to point to the custom player we just made, which has the agent inside of it, which means we can get everything to do with this player inside of this brand new instantiated class for the custom player. Hopefully that makes sense. Then we say, hey, initiate the UI because we need a user interface because we need to know how many super bucks uh, this player has. The last three here are simple. When the weapon button is interacted with, we go and get the player object. We grab that custom player by using the player object as our index. And we do a logic check for do we have enough? <laughs> it passes back a logic because on custom player, we're going to call check super bucks. And we're going to pass in the weapon cost because the weapon cost is what we're going for right now on weapon button. We want to know how much weapon. If we have enough, grant the item. If not, show the message that I have in the HUD, which is here, right here. So the next thing that we want to do is do the on collect because when we pick up the coins, we want to do something. So we're going to add super bucks on our custom player. Again, same thing. Find the player, find the custom player, call add super bucks on it and put in the collectible value. When the timer goes off, everybody gets cash. So all we need to do is just go through the whole player's map 
and give everybody whatever the timer value is. So add super bucks timer value, which we have up here is five. OK, over to the custom player. This is really important. So we've got all kinds of stuff going on up here because we need to make a UI. And this is a unique class. So unique is important because we may want to do a comparison one day. Is this character this character? And if it's not unique, then it can be the same. That's a whole other topic. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have our string to message. I've discussed this in the past, but essentially every item that needs to show a string but requires a message object, we need this string to message function. So handy. Now, right here, we're setting up the player parameter as our agent, but we're not instantiating it. You inst if you put it like this and you don't instantiate the object, like we see here in super bucks score text, which is a text block, which is instantiated right here. If we don't do that, then we have to pass it in when we instantiate the class, as you saw right here. So custom player, we pass in player is going to be the agent that we got right here. Hopefully this makes some sense. So we've got our text block, which is our Superbucks score text. That's going to show our Superbucks uh, amount. And the Superbucks amount is an integer. And right now it's zero. So by default, it's zero. And then we're going to call initiate UI when we create the player, when we create the custom player. And that is going to set the Superbucks score text object as this. So this is just setting the default text. We're going to set the default text color and we're going to set the shadow color. It's very simple. And then we're going to create the widget that we're going to have on the screen. If you don't know much about the UI, I've covered it in a couple of tutorials, uh, but essentially it's everything you can see on the screen. We can programmatically make stuff. We can put in images, we can put in text, we can put in uh, shadows and you know, as you see here. And then once we've done that, because we have the agent here, we can grab the player object, grab the player UI object, and then just add this widget. So the player score widget, which is a canvas. Canvas is something that covers the whole screen. And then inside of here is where we create our canvas. It's good to kind of separate these things out. It's all up on Epic site as well. If you look it up, you will be able to find even more information, but hopefully I can explain it a bit. Essentially what we're doing is we're creating a canvas. We're telling that canvas where to show things in it. And you can have a lot of things on your canvas. In this case, we only have one, which is the text. And then we have an two overlay slots within that. One is a bit of a background behind the text, so it shows up a little bit better. And one is the actual text. All of this stuff, again, is over on Epic site. But what we're doing here is when we set it at 0 0.5 and 0.5 on the X, we're essentially saying in the screen, put it right in the middle horizontally. For the Y at 0.2, we're saying in this screen, put it 20% below the top. So zero is the top, one is the bottom. And if you're looking at the screen, left is zero for X and uh, one for the for the right on the X. Hopefully that that makes sense, too. And then we're going to align the text half halfway uh, in the center. So we're going to center justify it with a 0.5 and that's it. And then we said this overlay, it's black with uh, opacity at 0.1. So that it shows our white text just a little bit better on the background. And then we set our widget in the other overlay slot as our score text block, which we passed in when we created the user eye, which is up here, which is this score text text block. That's that. <laughs> That's a lot to cover, but hopefully this all makes sense. OK. Last three, four things we have left to do is we need to be able to add super bucks, remove super bucks, check super bucks on the player. So adding is literally just going plus equals to whatever amount comes in to our super bucks and then update the UI and then remove super bucks. We minus it, update the UI, check super bucks, see if super bucks is less than the amount that we are checking on. So when we go to buy a weapon, it's 100. We check in, say, hey, do we have 100 super bucks? And this will return true or false. If we have enough, it's true. If we don't, it's false. And then update UI simply tells the text block that we created way earlier, hey, this is what you should show. And what are we showing? We're showing super bucks with the variable in here in these little squiggly brackets. That'll show it uh, what it is updated now. So it'll say exactly what super bucks we have right now. And that's it. That's everything for this tutorial. Hopefully that makes some sense. Don't ever forget to drag your game manager device onto the screen. Don't forget to put in your editables over on the details panel. 
And other than that, I think you guys should be good. I think this should be enough for you to understand just the very basics of doing multiplayer, handling players. And again, more of this information is up on Epic site. They've got their tutorials up there. You're know, using a player's map, a custom player, and that should get you guys going to doing even more. And I look forward to seeing what you guys create. If you want to share with me, let me know. Put it in the comments, chuck it in the Discord channel, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one.